Here's a workflow for getting data for any location on Earth from OpenStreetMap using Geofabric downloads and then we're going to clip it to a location that we're interested in. In this case, I'm going to choose Mexico and Mexico City. So I'm on the Geofabric downloads page. I go to North America and then I can see Mexico. In some countries like the United States of America, you'll need to click there and drill down to a state. But for Mexico, I can get the shape file, the zipped shape file of all the data for Mexico. I've already downloaded this, so let's take a look at the folder. Here's a folder with all the layers from OpenStreetMap via Geofabric's download page. And we can see lots of data, buildings, land use, and so on. So the next stage here is to switch to QGIS. What I recommend doing next is going to your browser panel and in the XYZ tile section, double click OpenStreetMap to add OpenStreetMap. If for any reason you don't see the browser panel, you can turn it back on by going to View, Panels, and then Browser. Once I get OpenStreetMap on screen, I'll zoom to the area I'm interested in. In this case, it's Mexico City, but this should work for anywhere on Earth. I'm going to zoom into Mexico City, and that will do. And now I need to think about how I can get a boundary that I can use to clip the Mexico data just to that area. If you've already got a boundary, that's fine. If you don't and you want to get one from OpenStreetMap, an easy way to do it is via a plugin. And if you go to plugins and manage and install plugins, just search for OSM inf info and I've already installed this, but you can install it. When you do install it, you go to the web menu and OSM info. It's not immediately obvious if you've not used this before, but it's actually very simple. I click on get OSM info for a point and I'll just click right in the middle of Mexico City. And that's gonna load up information about that point. So all I need to do is just expand this box and there, where it says is inside, these are the geographies that my point where I clicked is inside. I could dock this up here, but I'm going to keep it floating. It's inside Mexico City. And if I just move this over, when I click on Mexico City, you can see that's the official boundary of Mexico City. If I click on the one above, we'll get the kind of inner area. So every time I click on a different geography, I'll get the boundary. Now, if I want this to be a layer in my project, I'll just right click Mexico City and I'll hit save as temporary layer. And then I'll close the OSM info window. And I'll double right click on Mexico City to zoom to it. What I'll do is I'll just change the style to transparent fill and a red thick line. So now we've got our boundary for Mexico City. And that's great because I can use this to clip things out. This is only a temporary layer and you can tell that because of the little microchip icon, which I can click and then I can save this to a permanent layer for Mexico City. So I'm going to do that now by clicking on my browse button and I'm saving this to a folder that I've already prepared. So I'll hit save and I like to make my layer name match the file name. So I'll click OK. And all I did there was I just turned this temporary boundary from OpenStreetMap into a permanent layer on my computer. Now what I want to do is add all the OpenStreetMap data. So I can, I can browse to the data viewing via my data source manager, but I usually like to just drag and drop the data in, but seeing as how it's a shape file, set of data. I'll click on vector and I'll browse to where the data is stored. Here is my data. Now it can look quite messy because it's a shapefile format. If you want to make this a little bit easier for yourself when you're adding a shapefile via this method, go to all files and just change it to Esri shapefiles. And then you can just click and drag around the SHP parts of the file. That's usually a bit more straightforward. I'll click open and add and then I'll close the 
data source manager window. And when you do this, I'd recommend that you're zoomed into your area of interest. Now, what we've got here is all the different layers for Mexico. I can turn them all off by clicking the eye and then hide all layers. I'll turn back Mexico City on. Oops. And let's just see what the buildings are like here. So we've got some interesting buildings and the building coverage for where you are might not be complete. It might not be perfect because not everywhere has been mapped, but we can see the data covering the area we're interested in, in this case roads. So now what we want to do is we want to clip the Mexico data using the boundary for Mexico City. This will work pretty well as a batch process like you'll see in a minute, but usually it will work more quickly if you do one more step first. So to do this, you want to click on your toolbox button to open the processing toolbox. And I am going to type in spatial index. And we're going to do this thing called create spatial index. You don't really need to know much about this other than the fact that it will speed things up. So I'll right click on this and hit execute as batch process, which allows us to run an operation in multiple layers at the same time. In this case, we get a window. It might not seem obvious, but if we go to the autofill section and click on it, we can open or we can select from open layers, select all, that's fine, click OK. And all we do now is we'll click run. Make sure the load layers on completion box is not ticked here. And the reason for doing this, like I said, is it speeds up the processing when we clip the data. I'll hit run. And this is just kind of adding a spatial index to each layer which shouldn't take too long, but any time you spent doing this will save you time later. Okay, that's completed and you shouldn't see anything happen here. It just does something under the hood. You won't see any new layers or anything. So that's fine, that worked. Now what I want to do is clip. So I'll type clip into the processing toolbox. It's also in the vector menu in geoprocessing tools, but the, the processing toolbox is useful because you don't need to remember where things are in menus. So I'm going to clip, but I'm not going to double click here. I'm going to right click and choose execute as batch process. This requires just a little bit of explanation if you've not seen it before. So the input layers, they're the ones we want to clip. So I'll click on autofill and I will once again select from open layers and hit select all but I will deselect Mexico City because we're using that to clip. So we don't want to clip that. Everything else is fine, so I'll click OK. One thing you might see there, there's usually a layer in first before you add anything. And in this case, we can see waterways at the top and it's also in at the bottom. So I'll just remove one of them, otherwise we'll get a duplicate. So I'll select it on the left. I'll just hit the minus button. Okay, that's fine. The overlay layer, that's going to be the Mexico City layer. So I'll select it once. Autofill is what I'll click next. And then I will choose fill down. So the layers in the input layer column, they're the ones we want to clip. The overlay layer, that's kind of our cookie cutter layer. And the next one here on the right is autofill clipped. Now that's our output files. This is a little bit confusing if you've not done it. Just click the browse button, go to the folder where you want to save the data. In this case, I've already browsed to my Mexico City OSM folder and I'll call this Mexico City and I'll just put a dash in, just like that, Mexico City dash and hit save because we're now going to autofill the rest of the file name with parameter values and we're going to use the input layer name. So what we're doing here is our output files will be called Mexico City Dash and then they'll have the original file name after it. So I click OK and you can see what I mean. We've got one here called Mexico City and then the rest of the original file name is there. OK, so we're all set. The only thing I'd recommend is 
you can tick the box so that when the layers complete processing they'll be added to your map but I want to add them to a fresh map so I'll leave that unticked. I will hit run and I'll pause while it's running so you don't have to watch the progress bar. Just a warning, it's how long this takes depends on a number of things including the size of your country, the size of the data you're clipping, how powerful your computer is and those kinds of things. So we'll hit run, I'll pause and then we'll look at the results in a minute. So that was very quick on my machine but we still have to inspect the results. I did see an error message pop up originally but that might not actually be a problem. The best thing for me to do now is to close this and then take a look in the folder where I saved this to. So we do have a bunch of new files just for Mexico City. So what I will do is I'll close processing. I'll just select all these layers. I'll select the first one, hold down shift, select the last one, and I'll just remove them all. And let's add in our new layers. So we need to go to the folder where this is, which I'll do now. So here's the folder. I can't see them because I saved them as geo packages. So I just need to change the file type back to all. And then I can select all the ones I just created, which are these ones. Click open, click add, and then they'll all add to the folder. Click close. And now what we have is a set of open, pardon me, open street map files that cover our area of interest instead of the whole of Mexico. Let's turn all layers off and we'll turn on the Mexico City layer. And here's the waterways. And remember, you know, the open street map data may not be complete for your area, but we can see in this case, we've got lots of different features within Mexico City. So for example, if I turn on the roads, we can see how it's been clipped to the boundary. And we did that all at once using batch processing. Let's look at the buildings here. What we can see in this case is the buildings doesn't look like it's successfully clipped, which sometimes happens. So let's check that. And what I will do, if that ever happens, it's easy enough to fix. To get the buildings in, which for some reason didn't work in the batch clip, I'll just add them back in for the whole of Mexico. There we have the buildings. And all I need to do now is type clip into the processing toolbox. Double click it because we're not going to batch process. We're just going to do it once. The input layer is the buildings layer. The overlay layer is Mexico City. And my clipped layer here, I will save this to geo package. And there's the file. I've already done this successfully. So I'll just overwrite that file and you'll see how it works. I'm just doing a single clip here instead of a batch clip. And once I hit run, it's going to clip the buildings for the whole of Mexico using the Mexico City boundary. I'll hit run. It'll take a few moments depending on how fast your computer is. I'll hit close and I will turn off the Mexico buildings layer and I'll remove it. Click OK. And there are my Mexico City buildings which I can zoom into. And like I said, just remember that OSM data is not complete for everyone in the world. But that is how you can just manually fix anything. So the real message there is it's really important when you do any kind of processing to check your results. Just a visual inspection, just to make sure things are there. Just don't do it without thinking. Make sure you check your results.